After reading some of the comments about other people and how they label, and the fact that I've wanted to do a better job on labeling, I decided to buy a cheap, well, relatively inexpensive thermal printer to try out for printing my labels. I don't really do unboxing videos and I'm not going to start now. Just want to give some details or a few more details about the new little printer. I don't tend to buy top of the end things. I tend to buy middle of the road stuff or really bottom of the barrel stuff if it doesn't have to last too long. I wanted this to last a reasonable amount of time, but it's not going to be a high use item either. Uh, all I need is a couple of thousand labels a year, maybe three or four thousand labels a year tops. So it doesn't need to be that robust. Um, so the reviews on this machine were really good. Uh, it was a 4.6 stars on Amazon, had lots of reviews. And the Rolo machine was a little bit better, had a 4.7, but it's $200. This one's 91 So I decided to take a chance with it. It had some, some tips on how to use it, stuff about the software. It had the drivers on a little thumb drive. It has a little adapter for USB to USB-C, which... I didn't need because my computers are old, or at least these computers down here, uh, so USB was just fine. It can also do Bluetooth, but I wasn't using it on Bluetooth. Uh, this computer doesn't even have Bluetooth. It came with a small, so I don't even know how many because I didn't see that, but it had a small, here let me move this out of the way, came with a small supply of labels. So you could use it right away. Uh, once I hooked it to the computer, put the drivers on it, it started right up. I was trying to go from my phone, and I could do it from my phone, but the software for inputting the data was terrible on my phone. So I decided to just hook it to the computer that's near the that's near my bagging area. So again, it was $91 for the printer, and then a thousand labels was $26. Uh, so 2.6 cents a label, and if I can use a half label on a lot of them, that would only be 1.3 cents per label. Now, as far as how they stuck, and this bag is bad, so I just used it to test out how the labels stick. This is the label that I put on after the first test print, and then immediately, well, a couple of minutes, pulled this corner off, and it came up pretty easily but then I tried to pull this corner off the next day and it really didn't want to come off so um, let's try and I tried peeling off this label or this corner so if I really pick at it with my thumbnail I can kind of get it started but then it's peeling the paper off of it so it really stuck well. I think I'm going to be happy with those. They, they seem to be working out quite well. Okay, that's all I've got to say about that. It's a, it's a simple printer. It can be Bluetooth or USB cable. Just open it. You can set the size of the label. So if you're using a different size label stock, you can just pull the little button. It opens up. You can these closer together for a different size label stock and it looks like the maximum is this four inch label or just about Taxi. Let me just line it up there and close it down on it it seems real easy to use and at this point, since I've only had it for one batch of labels, I'm not going to recommend this printer because I don't know anything about it long term. I would have to have it for thousands of labels before I would say, yes, it's a good printer. So far, it's worked really well, but I've only done a dozen or so test prints. Um, so I really don't know. So I'm sure that there's a lot of people that know a lot more about label printing than I do. 
I haven't been involved with label printing in a lot of years. That's all I have to say about these labels so far. We'll keep using them and trying them, so uh, if it fails, you'll find out about it. The tuna salad one that I'm doing is going to be the first test one with it, and it really seems to be holding on very well. You know, so it would be difficult to get the label off now. So that I didn't expect. I thought that the label, this type of label, wasn't that good. Uh, these are cheap labels. And for some of the items, I will be able to cut them in half and get two labels out of one of the stickers. And the advantage over what I've been doing of using just paper and cutting it up is timeliness. I can print these on demand. This is down near my freeze drying area and I can just simply wait until I get all the information and print them as I need them. They print it very quick. So we'll see how that goes. As soon as we get the tuna out, we're going to be using this and I've got it kind of figured out how I'm going to use it. I'm just using open office labels. It's real simple and of course you can use a database system and somebody has suggested Azure label, A-Z-U-R-E label as a system and I looked into it, it looks pretty interesting but I already have this and I know it works so I'm going to start out with this so I don't have to do anything new to start with to get going. So I'm going to start with these and so let's go print a few labels for these. I'm going to do the 12 of these separate ones in the little bags and these are not a stand-up bag these are some that I got that were a mixed pack oh and I tried out one of the stickers that came with them they're a seven mil bag but they came as a flat pack without the the gusseted bottom on it but that I figured would be fine for a few items and this is one of the items I'll be able to just get that in there so it'll be good for a single serving, one use kind of thing. So we're going to get those in there. So I've got all the information I need for a label. So let's go make a label. Let's make 12 of them. So I'm just using OpenOffice for this. And there's all kinds of label programs and databases. You could set this up for the labels. I've done that on other labels. You could set it up to pull all of this data from your data sheet if you're putting it directly into a system instead of on paper like I have been. So I've got the batch number and the date that it went into the freeze dryer, what this particular one is, doing it with two of them on each label because it'll fit. And then I'm ready to print that. And then we can print that. Let's see, print preview, looks good. And then we'll try that out with this new little printer. Okay, so let's try that out. First, I'll try just one. I'll need six altogether, but let's try one. Ah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay, so then I'll do five more of them. Printing on demand for the labels could be pretty cool. And we'll print five more of them. That'll give me the dozen I need. How's that? Then I can just cut them in half and put half of it on the bag. And printing on demand. I like this. Well, this is the plan on these. So it's a regular pint bag. You can see it's a very similar size but it has the gusseted bottom and then the the zipper and then the little tear-off piece. This has the tear-off notches but it's on the opposite side of the seal area. So you're actually filling it from the bottom and sealing it at the bottom. So I think I'm going to like this. And this is going to be the bottom. I need to make sure I leave space at the bottom for the seal. And that's not a problem. I'm glad people had told me about that they were using labels. 
I honestly didn't think that they would stick well to the Mylar bags. They really stick great. We'll see how they hold up long term. Once it hits, it really sticks pretty well. I, th I think I'm going to be happy with these. So those are the first 10. We'll come back and get some more of these.